All right, so today I want to go over real quick sort of the things I really love and really hate about Go. Go has quickly become one of my most used languages. I built the entirety of the back end for Insider Viz with it, been using it in side projects, and I've been doing a bunch of work with it behind the scenes trying to get some new stuff set up, and I have found that I think it's probably my favorite language at this point. I want to break down the things that I really love about it, but there are a few things too that I sort of want to go over that kind of suck about it. So the best place to start there is going to be concurrency. Concurrency has probably become my favorite thing about Go. It is so effortless to set up these concurrent routines and to run all this stuff. It will make your servers so much faster. It will make your application so much better for so little effort. So what I did right here is I just made a basic demo to showcase this. So I have this long task up here. It's just going to sleep for one second, but you can imagine this was doing some really heavy computation and we needed to run this like 10 times. We needed to fetch something from the database that do something on every single document. So this would take quite a while. So I went ahead and simulated this once with concurrency and then once without concurrency. So we go ahead down here and we just do go run main.go. We can see right here, so we started the long task all at the same time, then they were done all at the same time. Concurrently, they took one second. Without concurrency, they took three seconds. So the point is we can execute every single thing at the exact same time, and setting this up is not hard. All you have to do is you have to call this function as a go routine, and then set up a wait group down here so that we block the execution until everything is executed in here, because we might need the results of this, or if we need to pass data back and forth, we could use channels and all this stuff, and there's a million ways to do it, but it's very, very easy. So we get this beautiful concurrency, all this speed with little effort, which leads me to my next sort of point, which is the speed. Go is so freaking fast. I think I saw a benchmark where it benchmarks at about half the speed of C, which is crazy because it's a garbage collected language. And on web servers especially, it is so freaking fast. I've seen benchmarks where Go and Rust are close. Obviously, if you optimize it, Rust will pull ahead, but... The ease of use that is made up for with Go is just insane. It is so much easier to write Go. So you end up with this beautiful sort of experience of the language is insanely fast and the development is insanely fast. And then you just get this great setup where I think that at this point, Go is by far the best choice for heavy backend web servers where unless you need to do like something that's tightly coupled to a front end to like a Next.js app or a Nux app or something and you want to share the types between TypeScript so if you have a TypeScript backend and front end I get that especially if you're doing heavy IO stuff like if all you're doing is database reads and writes which is IO TypeScript is going to be great for that node is very fast on the IO it's one that we get into these longer calculations and heavier uh, CPU intensive processes that Go will really start to shine when we can start leveraging that concurrency, we can start leveraging that native speed it has. That's when it really starts to get better. So then the next thing I kind of want to talk about, which is lesser talked about, is the package system. The package system is actually pretty intuitive on Go. So when you organize your projects, you can organize, they're organized down into packages. So up here, I have my package main, main.go. If we run go run main.go, it'll run this. But then if I want to, I can create a new package. Let's call this demo. So I make a demo package and I'm going to call this, um, MyMethod.go, then I'm going to call this package demo, and then I'm going to do func demo, and then we are just going to say, uh, here's ln, uh, hello from demo, and we'll go up here and fix this to be func. Okay, so what we've done right here is we've created a whole new package, which we can then import in our main. So all we have to do is, if you're using VS Code or something like that, it'll automatically do this for you as great dev tooling. I'm just going to go down here. I don't want all of this right now. I'm going to go ahead and comment this out. And I'm just going to do demo dot um, demo. And if we run that. And it might yell at you here and it might not do it. But all you need to do is to go mod tidy. And it'll figure out what's going on. Then if we save this again, it'll fix it. Now we have demo in here. So we've imported this demo package. And now we can go ahead and run this. And it just works. And another thing you just saw there is the tooling is great. There it did, VS Code didn't automatically pick that up and it wasn't a problem. All I have to do is just run go mod tidy. It'll refresh everything be like, oh, okay, you want to do this? It'll find it, sniff it out. And then I can just import demo.demo. And if you want to package something or import from a public source or whatever, you typically just can point to a Git repo. So you just add a tag to that repo for the version and then you host that repo publicly and then you can import the package that way. Super easy, don't have to download anything. All you have to do is just um, do um, add that import up here at the top. So it's very intuitive, very easy, very lightweight, and it makes setting up projects 
very simple. And another thing that's really great about Go is how intuitive and easy the syntax is. It is a C-based language, so if you've used any normal, not normal, but any of the kind of traditional programming languages like C, JS, uh, Java, C sharp, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, you're gonna feel right at home right here. It makes a lot of sense. It feels very intuitive to write. It's got a lot of nice quality of life things like this colon equal operator, where it'll just infer the type based on the right hand operator and just assign it to this. So it just knows that this is a weight group right here. Very easy. Don't have to do anything. It is extremely fast to write. So it leads me to the final thing I want to talk about, and that is going to be the structs. The structs in Go are phenomenal. They are so much stronger than in any other language I've seen or used. And the reason for that is because they have this extra serializing thing over here where you can define how these should be serialized or deserialized in different data types. So if we want to send this struct to JSON, we can specify that we want these fields to match this. So we want our ID when in code, it's going to be capital I, capital D. In our JSON, we want it to be lowercase i, lowercase d. Same thing with title, author, year. It makes this super easy and intuitive, and it also makes working with databases way easier because we can define, okay, in our database language, so in this example, I was using MongoDB. MongoDB uses BSON, so it, from the database entry is going to have these fields. Its ID is going to be underscore ID, but here I want that to be a uh, capital ID for when I'm working with it in the struct, so I just define that there. It'll automatically figure that out, and it just works. We can also define methods on our structs. We can do all sorts of stuff. They're really powerful and really, really nice to use. So with all of that said, I do have some complaints with Go and there are a few things that are pretty annoying. So the first one I want to talk about is the sort of lack of opinions that Go has about everything. And this is a sort of blessing and curse. It's, it makes it, it gives you the ability to do whatever you want and to structure projects however you want and to handle things however you want, which is really great in a lot of ways, but it can also just lead to you making bad decisions and it can also slow you down if you don't know where to go. So recently I recorded a, an example of building out a REST API with Fiber and Go and MongoDB. And I set it up this way. So I had a models folder, a common folder, a router folder, etc. I could have done this 700,000 different ways. And it doesn't even just go into how I can structure a project or a framework, because the framework's pretty unopinionated. Fiber is express-based, and express is already fairly unopinionated about things. So, not only that, but the language itself, there are a ton of different ways to assign different variables. There are a ton of different ways to allocate things. There are a ton of different ways to solve every single problem. And it doesn't really care how you do it. You can just do whatever you want. And this leads to the next sort of thing, which is there is a very limited to borderline non-existent standard library in Go. There are a lot of things that other languages will provide for you. Like they'll provide a sort operator for arrays or something like that. Go doesn't provide any of that. You just have to implement that yourself, which is, I think it's a design choice and I sort of get it where, yeah, you don't need them to handhold and do that for you. Just provide your own implementation, but it can sort of slow you down in certain edge cases where it's like, well, there's just no generally accepted way to do this which does sort of lead to every single Go repo you look at might do things slightly differently because different devs are going to handle things in different ways. And if a sort of bad habit or pattern sort of emerges within the community and everyone just starts copying them, it can lead to sort of, it can sort of eat itself alive. And it's not ideal. Although, again, I can see the argument for why it's there. And then really one of the biggest things, I think my biggest complaint with Go is the way you have to handle errors. So just looking at this file, I can... The error handling is pretty annoying. I like throwing my errors all the way up to main to have one central place to handle them or log them or do something with them. But that means that I am just passing error after error after error. And it feels like, especially when you're doing IO stuff with a database or something, almost every single call is going to have this if error not equal to nil return error. You are going to write this so freaking much. I don't know of a better way to do this. If there is, please tell me. I would love to hear it. But generally speaking, you're going to have to write this a lot because that's just sort of how Go error handling works is you just can have like two returns on a function and then the error is either nil or an error. If it's nil, we do nothing. If it's an error, we throw the error further up. It's not ideal. I don't love it, but you know, for everything that the language does give you, I can handle writing these extra three lines a couple times per project. Again, not ideal, but it works. So 
Hopefully that gives you a good idea of my sort of thoughts and stance on Go. I maintain that this is probably the best language for backend development in 2022. I think it just does everything so well. It is so easy to get up and running, so easy to develop, so fast, has tons of great features, great support for everything, and it's rapidly growing. I don't think you can really beat it unless you have the sort of TypeScript mono repo set up of a Next.js back end and a Next.js front end, and you're linking with TRPC, and you've got end-to-end -end type safety and all this, and yeah, that really can't be beat. Obviously, for an IO-based web app where you're just doing a lot of database reads and writes, there's no reason to use Go over that. I could not justify a good reason for that, but if you do have a use case where you need a heavier back end than just IO stuff, Go is the way to go, in my opinion.